So in this video, we're going to start our journey to revising uh, Go templates. And for some people, this this is their first uh, introduction to Go templates. But like I said, we need Go templates to be able to construct our HTML responses to our HTMX front end. Yeah, HTMX requires us to construct our views on the server and send it to the client. And H uh, Go templates are going to help us to become a rock star at doing that. So yeah, I have a simple server setup. It uses the net HTTP uh, package to create a server. The server runs at port 3000 down here. You can see, listen and serve port 3000. And right now I just have a base route, uh, a base route that prints out a message. I don't need this AD go. I was using this to kind of confirm that my application was running, but we can take that out. So we have a, a base route and it just simply prints out this message using the response writer so if we save this let's just test that this is working um let's go to a command line uh run this with go run main.go enter everything looks fine okay i think that's why i put the hey go here so that i can know that things are going fine but this is this is currently listening so we are not getting a return back to the terminal so it means that our server is running so now I can go to my browser and open a new tab and go to localhost 3000. Localhost 3000. And if I hit enter, I should see that message. Welcome to the home route. Welcome to the home route. Let me, yeah, this is at 150. Cool. So I see that message. Welcome to the home route and shows that our Go server is working fine uh go server is working fine that's cool now in this video we're going to learn how to pass a single template let's see how to pass a single html template in our request and to do that i'm going to um come back here to vs code uh open the sidebar and i'm going to create a new file this is going to be an html file so i'll say ohm ohm.html home.html i'm going to create this file um now go templates can you can have different types of extensions but i'm using .html because i just want the syntax highlighting and code completion in vs code so and yeah and it also is semantically right yeah, html i'm returning html i should have html files so but if you have any other strategy just that you're comfortable with you can go ahead and use that but i'm going to be using .html so first i'm going to just scaffold the html5 um you know doc type the html skeleton let me wrap this view yeah good so i don't get all the horizontal scroll bars so we have this and yeah i'm just going to say what can i say yeah let's say home page so in the title home page and uh, in the body i'll put an h1 there and i will just say welcome home welcome home so we save that yeah, this is the template we want to pass. This is the HTML that we want to return to the client. Save that. Now to pass this and return it to the client, let's come back to our main.go. Pull this back. So in order to pass and uh, return HTML in our um, Go applications, which is what we're here to do, we're going to be needing the um, HTML forward slash template package. Yeah, HTML forward slash template package. Now, um, if I just use it within my code, I have the Go uh, Go tool uh, or Go extension installed on VS Code. So if I just use it within my code, it will just auto import this. But I'm doing this so that we can see what the name of the template is. So HTML slash template uh, is giving me this uh, red squiggly line because I'm importing it but not using it. If I hit enter now, it's just going to remove it. But yeah, I'm writing this out so that I can see the name of the package. Just in case you're not familiar with the name of the package. So once we have this imported, then I can go into my main route. That's my base route. Go into my base route. And I'm going to create a variable called TMPL. TMPL, short for template. And set that to template.must. And inside template.must, I will say template.pass files. And inside template.pass files, I'm going to say ohm.html. Ohm.html. So 
here I have passed my home.html template that I created. That's the one that we created here, home.html. I've passed it to this pass files functions of the template package. Now this template is coming from this. It's coming from this HTML slash template package. So that's where this is coming from. We're using most just to make sure that we're not getting errors with whatever comes from this. But most of the time this is not, you can, you, most of the time you can remove this and just use it like this. Yeah, and it is most likely uh, still be fine. So let's um, bring our must back. I think there's also another error. Uh, okay, not used. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So if we remove must, <laughs> I think I get what happens here. If we remove must, then this function returns two properties. It returns true items. So there has to be an error. So that's why I told you earlier that template.must is just making sure that it takes care of the error aspect. So we can just have the template itself. So once we have this, uh, we can then return the page. We can return the page. So I'm going to get rid of this uh, print line. And instead of that, we're going to say error, just to catch the error in this function that we're about to call, error equals tmpl, sorry, tmpl dot execute, call the execute function, and we pass it the response writer, and the second argument will be nil. The second argument is going to be nil. Now, the second argument is nil because um, this is where we pass any data that we probably want to pass into our template. This is where we pass it. But for this uh, home.html, we're not passing any data. Everything is hard coded. So we have this error. We are executing the template. We're calling the tmpl.execute to execute the template. We're passing it the response writer. So it just returns, it writes the template to the response as an HTML string. And uh, just for good measure, let us undo the error. We say if error is not equal to nil, then we can simply return an HTTP error. We say HTTP.error. Passing the response writer. Get the error. And after getting the error, we can then pass a status code. And that status code will be internal error. That's 500. Status internal server error. Yeah, internal server error. So we'll pass internal server error. Let's save this file. Let's scroll up. Okay. Um, uh, the FMT package has been removed now because we no longer use it. So yeah, we imported the HTML slash template template package, and uh, inside our base route, we simply um, pass the template. We pass the template, the single template that we have, home.html. We pass it using pass files. This template dot must just helps us take care of the error so that we don't have to handle errors from template uh, operations. Um, so then we execute the template with the execute function by passing it the response writer. We pass nil because we're not passing any data to our template. And we just do some error handling here. This already returns the, um, the HTML to the client. So let's save this. Let's save this. And let's go and run it in our command line. Let's kill the previous process. And once again, do go run main.go. Go run main.go. It doesn't return with any error, so we're good. Now let's go to our browser. And here we can uh, go to our localhost 3000 and refresh. Let's refresh. And now we have HTML. Now we have HTML being returned. This is our H1 welcome home. If you um, do view source, you can see it's definitely the HTML that we turned. And yeah, that's how you pass a single template. That's how you pass a single template um, using the Go template package. Now, you might be wondering, okay, yeah, this is a full page. Yeah, sure. Cool. I've seen something like this in Express and stuff like that. Just, you know, yeah, return HTML page. You, you can do that when you're making Go using Go to build your full stack application and you want to handle both your front end and your back end with Go. What if I just want to return a fragment, which is what we'll be doing a lot with HTML? Well, what if I just want to return a fragment of HTML? Let's see how to do that. Uh, let's go back to VS Code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create a new file. I'll just call that message.html. Message.html. 
So inside message.html, we'll just have a single h1 and it will say hello students. Hello students. So we have this. Now this is this is not a full HTML page, it's just one single um h1 element. Uh, let me close this. One single h1 element. So how do we return this? How do we return this with go? Very simple and straightforward. Um, put this to the side. All you have to do is just replace this home.html with message.html. Home.html, we replace it with message.html. Let's save this. Go back and we run our Go server. It's running. Let's go to our browser. And now when we refresh, it says hello student. Yeah, hello student. Go template package already has a, what you need to return both full pages and fragments. So you're good to go. You're good to go. No pun intended. <laughs> you're good to go. So uh, whether you're returning a full page or you're returning just a simple fragment, you can, yeah, you can use the Go HTML template package. Now, one thing you can also do, and which is going to come in and very handy much later, it's going to come in very handy uh, later on in all our um, activities in this course, is that you can name a fragment. Yeah, you can name a fragment. And giving fragment names where it's very useful is that when a fragment has a name, you can import it into another fragment or another or another HTML template, like a full page. You can import it. You can use that name that you gave the fragment to import it into another template. So let's see how we can name our fragment and also execute our fragment using the name so uh to do that i'm going to go back to vs code so here in vs code i'm going to go to message.html and now i want to give it a name i want to give this particular template its own name so and by the way you can name full pages too not just fragments you can name full full pages so like our home.html you can give it a name too using this same process so what i'm going to do to give this a name is to have uh this double curly brace and say define define then i'll open quotes and type in the name i want to give it i will type in the name that i want to give this particular template so here i'm going to say greeting fragment greeting fragment so i define i use the define keyword and give it the name then to finish that off you need to end it so double curly brace and say end so you need to end that definition so with this, we have given it a name, greeting fragment. Let's save this. Now we can go into our main.go and use the template name to return it, to execute it. And to do that, instead of using the execute function, I'm going to use the execute template function. Execute template function. So this execute template function helps you to specify the template you want to execute. Yeah, helps you to specify the template you want to execute so it takes uh three arguments that's why this is already throwing an error because we only gave it two arguments so the second argument is the name of the template the name of the template now if the template doesn't have a name you can use the file name so i i can say greeting or message rather message dot html and it will run but if i've already given it a name which I've done here, greeting fragment, save this. Um, I will just give it that name. I'll just pass that name to this argument. So greeting fragment, and to make sure that something really changes on our screen, because we've already loaded it. We've already loaded our fragment as hello student, but just to make sure that something changes so that we know that there's a change and we're loading things fine. Uh, I'll, I'll change this student to learner. Yeah, greetings learner so um we'll save that everything looks fine here we're using execute template and we're passing in our name the name we give to our template we save now if we go to our terminal and we run our application it's running fine it gives no errors then we we'll come back to chrome refresh and now we have hello learner yeah, 
hello learner now we're using the name of the template to execute the template we're using the name of the template to write it back to the client so that's how uh, you can name your template it will come in handy when we are passing multiple templates which is what we're going to be doing in the next video